Alright folks, it's Andy here from Rustin the Woodsman. So today's video I'm going to be wandering the woods foraging for tinder materials. And then I'm going to demonstrate different fire lighting methods using those tinder materials. So if that sounds like something that'll tickle your fancy, then keep watching. So this tree here that's fallen over, this is silver birch. It's fallen down probably the winds to be honest and it's died. But the good thing about silver birch is the bark. We can use the bark to start fire. When it's old like that it'll just strip off into pieces. And this bark contains resin. So the good thing about this birch bark is this white silvery side, we can use our knife to scrape it into a powder form and then with a ferro rod we can put a spark into that and it'll ignite. So one of the tinders we're going to talk about is resin. And this is an old Norway spruce and this woodland, the end of last summer they started logging it and this spruce here has taken a massive injury up here and you see where the, the bark's all gouged out, basically a big chunk's been taken out of it. But it started to ooze out the resin which congeals and then hardens and it protects itself from you know outward diseases and such. So it, this is where the injury is and it's all basically drizzled down the tree all the way down to the root system and to the ground. But we can take like a you know a small chunk of it from here and we can use that to start a fire. So this is a cedar tree and it's got this external bark that sort of peels away without any undue harm to the tree. And if you gather enough of it, because it's really fibrous, you can use it as a tinder bundle. It's nice and dry under there. There's about two or three of these spruce trees that have fallen over. And they're still alive because the, the boughs still have green needles on them, but they're all sort of intertwined like that, the branches have made a, a roof. It's all nice and dry under there. It'd be a good survival shelter that. So we've got this down spruce tree here, and if we saw some of these lower branches, the resin in the tree will sort of congeal if you like, and that's where we get fat wood from. <laughs> so 
So that darker colour in the centre there, that's the resinous area, that's where the fat wood is. And all we have to do is split this piece of wood down and we'll go to get to that. And we can shave it down into a powder like form and put a spark into it from the ferro rod. Even Rusty likes it. Are you having it? Are you having it? Oh, see. You're just, like, you're just having it. Ah, oh, right, okay. I'll cut another one in, yeah? Roger that. Roger that, bud. So behind me here you can see all this dead grass and we can use this for nest material for a tinder bundle. So folks, I've picked these five different tinders and they can be found relatively easy around pretty much the whole of the UK and I'd imagine a lot of these around the world as well. So on this side here we've got some dry grass and in the centre here, this is the cedar bark. In this tin, this is the spruce resin. On this side here we have the silver birch bark. And I don't want any rude comments but this one here, this gnarly looking thing, that darkness to the centre there, that's fat wood. I'm going to need to chop into this to get to that, but we'll get into that in a minute. So I thought I'd start off with the birch bark because it's one of the more simpler processes when using it for tinder material. And all you're going to need is your knife and a ferro rod. So when you're scraping the birch bark, you want to do it the silver side up. And on all these fine little flakes, this is what you want. And all these fine little flakes here, these will take a spark from the ferro rod really nicely. So now that you've got your shavings, you can just leave them as they are. In a minute you're going to put your spark into them, but what I also like to do when I'm using birch bark is I've, if I've got a few more pieces like I do here, is just tear these into small strips. The reason being is once you put your spark into this and you've got your flame going, by rights you could add your kindling right on top of it and it, it could take, but if your kindling happens to be a bit damp, this little powder here, it will burn out quickly or potentially before your kindling takes flame. So what I like to do is make more strips like this and then add that onto the flame. It gets the flame bigger, hotter and it'll last a bit longer for your kindling to take. So put your ferro rod down into the powder like that and with the spine of your blade there just do a couple of scrapings from your ferro rod and it puts some of the material of the ferro rod into your tinder bundles. It's just a bit extra bit of insurance rod to make sure the flame gets going. And that is that. This will burn quite quickly, that's why you would want to add some of these strips of bark to it to help extend that flame and make it last a bit longer so you can put your kindling into it. So in this tin, this is where we have that couple of chunks of spruce resin that we took off the spruce tree. But this, relatively the same sort of process, you can sort of crush this down so it's powder-like and then put a spark into this as well. So we just take a chunk there and then we're just going to sort of use a knife to sort of like chop it, open it up a bit, get the, the inner out. So it takes the spark better. 
and then we're going to do the same again just put the fair rod into the tender material and then we're going to strike down again again just do a couple of easy strikes just to get some of the material down into it And there we are. Just put our hands around it just to help it take. And if you wanted, you can add some of the uh, birch bark to that flame as well just to help it last a bit longer. Or if you've got any more of the spruce resin left over, just put that on too. So the next tender we're going to go for is this one, this gnarly looking branch here. In the centre of it is some fat wood and we're going to use the knife and a batten to split this down and get to that fat wood. And again, we'll use the ferro rod to put a spark into that. So this is a split in half now, and this darker material here, that's the fat wood, and that's what we need to chop out. And this side as well, that darker portion there, that's the fat wood. And to be honest, it looks really concentrated, so I've got high hopes for this bit. And there you are, this thin sliver that come out the centre, all that there, that's resin. We've still got the other half here to get, to give us some more. And that's just the outer bit. So the yard folks, that's the centre of that gnarly bit of wood. And you can see there along that edge, it's fat wood there. And then here as well, same there. A bit more on this one. But we'll get what we need from it to get a flame. So when I'm using sticks of fat wood like this, what I like to do is sort of reverse ferro rod if you like. So rather than striking down, I like to scrape the spine of the knife upwards and it gives me some nice shavings of the fat wood into a little pile which I can then put spark into. Just chop them off, add them to the pile, and just keep doing that. And again, like the box bark, we're going to use a ferro rod, do a few scrapings into it. And there you are. What you could do if you wanted, you can split these down into small sticks of kindling the leftover fatwood and add it in just to help the flame go but that's going pretty well or put it in your pack and save it for later But you can do loads of different combinations with these sorts of tinders where you're going to use it with your ferro rod. You know, if you want to save your, save your fat wood, just do some scrapings like that. And birch bark's a lot easier to find than it is fat wood. So that's, there's more of a process to go through to get firewood. You have to cut the wood, split it down, etc, etc, to get to the centre, to get to the fat wood. Whereas the birch bark, you can just strip it off trees and, you know, rip it into sections. So it's probably better, better to save your fat wood scrape the material you need of it into a, a pile, put a spark into it and if you want to extend that flame then add something like birch bark to it. 
But yeah, I suppose we'll move on to the cedar bat now. Now cedar bark is good for something with like an ember. You can use this with a bow drill. You get an ember from a bow drill, put it into the centre of this and then blow it into flame. But you could do the same with a piece of char wood. Now with a piece of char wood, you can put a spark into it from your ferro rod or if you've got a flint and steel kit, you can put a spark into it from that. So when I'm using a ferro rod to put a spark into a piece of char wood, I usually just get the one piece and put it by itself. Because these sparks are extremely hot, if I was to put them into the tin, the whole lot would ignite and I'd rather not waste it that way. Another method to use with a char pump wood is flint and steel. So there's a couple of different ways to use the flint and steel uh, with charred punk wood. I mean, you don't have to use charred punk wood, you can use charred cloth or anything that can be charred within reason. But just take a piece of char wood and then pinch it between your thumb and the piece of flint. Then take your steel and just strike it against it and hopefully a spark will catch on the, the piece of punk wood. Personally, I don't like doing it that way because the, the punk wood is really fragile, it just crushes under the pressure of your thumb against the, the flint. So I don't do it that way. I put the spark into the tin. By holding the flint as close as I can and then just striking the steel down and hopefully <laughs> a spark will land in there and catch onto one of these pieces. So we've got the char piece here, it's smouldering away. And then we've got the, the nest material there. So what we'll do is put this into the centre.
So the final tender material I'm going to use is the, the ball of dry grass and with that I'm going to use the bow drill. Um, my preferred tinder bundle for the bow drill is dry grass. I have used bracken, I have used uh, cedar bark, but I think this is just a much more finer material and just catches the ember a lot better, in, in my opinion anyway. So yeah, the components, we've got the bow drill, we have the, we have the bow, we have the spindle on the hearth board, we have a bearing block, which is a limpet shell, I just find the point of the, um, the spindle seats better into the top of that shell, better than a piece of wood. And I've got a, a little ember pan and I put that under the V-notch on the hearth board to catch the ember. So let's give it a whirl. Hey bud. in the bundle and put this ember into it. So yeah folks, that's five different tinder materials and a few different ways to ignite them. But like I said in the video, you don't you know you don't have to use them individually, you can combine them to give you a better chance of getting a fire going. You know, it's, it's not cheating, especially if you're in a situation where your life depends on it. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you happen to find it useful, if you could give it a thumbs up, maybe share it. And you know, as always, I'm very thankful you've taken the time out of your day to watch. And uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Take care. Come on, let's go. Nearly forgot the seating pad.